Welcome everyone. So today we are here with your host Duma. This is your host Roma. Today we are talking about the power of spoken words. There is power of life and death in the tongue. And in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and God was the word. So word word word, God. word. <laughs> word up words are very powerful and some people don't realize that when we are speaking a word first we have a thought and once we bring it into existence with our words we're actually sending out vibrations so words have energy um like qu quantum physics or is it quantum energy <laughs> yes so words even have energy and they carry out a frequency of feelings that come from within us. Without words, a thought can never become reality. So just because we have certain thoughts don't mean that we need to bring them out into words because words are so powerful that we're creating our reality with our words. So our words are our world. What can't you create without words? Yes, but people, oh, What do you mean by words? Are you saying, you can, are you saying so, spoken word or thought words? Spoken words. Mm -hmm. So yes, we can create without words, but people don't realize that if you're not mindful or conscious about the words that you use, you can destroy whatever you're building. So you can make it harder for yourself. You can potentially create blocks or create friction by certain words that you say and it's the way that you, we say the word and the tone that we use and when we say certain words how we say them all that matters so this is what we're talking about today is the way we speak and the type of words that we choose to use because we gotta use them Yes, but doesn't mean that we always have to say something. So choosing the right word sometimes mean, means being quiet, silent. So if there's only a negative remark, then it's best to just stay quiet. I agree. So since our words create a reality, why not choose the very best words to create our very best reality? True. You know, back in the day, people didn't really have language. They just had symbols and, you know, they were just acting. They didn't really have a language, really, right? No. The cavemen? Well, they, they probably had a spoken language first before a written language, for sure. And I'm sure one of the first things was language. But how do they communicate? Other than writing, I'm saying like... With words. They did? With spoken words, but not writing words. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm saying they didn't really have full sentences. They just would show each other things and just start doing things, right? Okay. Like way, way back in the day. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm saying is we humans came up with this brilliant thing called language. Mm -hmm. And... That's how we are so blessed out of all the creations because we have the power of the spoken word. Yeah, it's, it's uh, completely unique to our species. Yes, and this is why we must be very careful with the words, the seeds, or the words, the bullets that we put out there. And sometimes... It's a, yeah, it's a responsibility. It really is. Mm -hmm. We'll continue. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people do complain, and I'm guilty of it. I used to do it, gossip, all that. That's before I became so mindful. But this is because, as a society, we've become conditioned to talk about our misfortunes or our problems. And I think that's because that's to, always to the TV. To express them? What do you mean by that? 
So as a society, we've become conditioned. Like when we come together, like sometimes friends only call each other when they have something bad to say, or when they get together, they say, "Oh my God, I have so many bills," or you know, "This is what happened at work," and these stupid workers, they don't understand me. And I'll only just talk about their misfortunes because sometimes when you talk about the good things, the other person may. You know, if it's not an equal friendship. So if you're in a good circle of friends, you're not going to have these issues. Um, in fact, your friends will point it out. They'll say, hey, you know, why don't you look in the bright side or always try to pick you up? But there are situations where friends, they'll call you. And they'll only call you when something negative is going on. Or, you know, they'll call you and ask you. Um, you know how that negative situation is going that you might have told them about a month or two ago they'll call you and remind you about that so if that makes any sense yeah mm -hmm. yeah you gotta stay away from those negative people yes so when we complain about our lives to others um, the words that we put out there actually are now one in the universe number two now they're in somebody else's head as well Wait, what was the first one? So, when we complain about ourselves to mm -hmm. other people, we're manifesting, like, negativity because, okay. one, we're already speaking it, and number two, now we have somebody else thinking about that, so that's more energy put towards that thought or that negative feeling, mm -hmm. even if it's just for a moment. Because what if you start a discussion on it, like, if the other person's not mindful and about that it? Have, that would have to be spoken, right? Pretty much? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you have a problem, you know, you figure it out. You talk about it in a way that you're not making fun of yourself or you're not criticizing yourself so hard that, you, you know, you talk, You have to, basically you have to think about things. Do you even want to talk about your problems to other people actually though? Like why would you want to tell people you're unlucky in love or that, you know, your job sucks and take that time and take those thoughts and those words and try to figure out how to change that. Yeah, that, or yeah, or just tell someone you really trust. Yeah, it's okay to talk about it. I'm not saying don't talk about these things, but rather than saying my job really sucks, maybe say I would really like to find an an enjoyable position. Mm -hmm. But if you're if you if the, if you're not planning on leaving your job, then don't talk about how much it sucks. Right. That's you another. Don't, don't that's wanna, another episode. Yeah, you don't want to shit in the shit in the lake. <laughs> well, this this is not for the settlers. So now that you're a person who honestly wants to change and you're facing some challenges, rather than saying I'm unlucky in love, you can just say, at this moment, love is. Say I am love. <laughs> Which yes. Is true. It, yeah, exactly. I am love. And then you will attract that. But if you right. say I'm unlucky in love, then once you say I'm unlucky, the words now, the vibration, the sound, all this is it's seeped through. It's gone to the, the walls, the trees, the universe. It penetrates, it it flows. It's like it's an energy. It's on a frequency. So the higher, the more positive our words are, the higher our frequency, the higher our mindset, and the more in tune we are with ourselves, we fly high on this frequency. When we have negative thoughts and bad feelings and negative words, we're really low on a low frequency. And the goal is to stay either high or at least, you know, balanced. But there is a potential to stay high, fly so high that it, it feels like you're high, literally, on stuff. I mean, I don't know what, but I wouldn't know too much about that. Anyways, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, Emma? I understand. Yeah. All right. Um, so basically, when we speak out, when we speak out loud, it becomes true in your mind and the other person's mind. So. Misery loves company, and you know, you guys will just be sitting there complaining forever, and it will be a miserable situation. Mm -hmm. That's what they mean by misery loves company. Yeah, that's true. But also, positivity loves company, too. Yeah. Just in different ways. 
Yes. Positivity invites and attracts company. So when you're positive, you attract all the great people and energies, situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much in the exact in the exact opposite way that negativity attracts negative Nancys all the time. Yes. Or doubtful Debbies. Mm-hmm. So what? is the most important thing a person can do to avoid that. Be aware of your surroundings. Be mindful of where you go, you know, and then if you're somewhere like in a grocery store or something like that, and you don't have any control over it, so best to block it out. But the things that you have control over, like your circle of friends, if you know now these friends are always complaining stop going there stop calling the one friend that always has negative things to talk about and don't watch the news yeah great <laughs> don't advice. watch the news number one that's all news actually news. that's number one rule because if you really need to stay updated have it come to your cell phone they have all the articles that way you choose what you want to read rather than you being fed all this bs like about whatever they talk about. I can't even, I don't even know because it's like so. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't I even, even know what to call it. I wouldn't even read stuff. <laughs> I would just get the fuck out of all that because that's all negativity in my eyes. Not the propaganda, yeah. The news is controlled and there are some good, you know, there's some good info on CNN sometimes or National Geographic and certain channels, but you have to still, you have to be selective of what you listen to and what you believe. Yeah. So watching the regular local news is not a good source of information, just so you know. Yeah. And a good source actually are things like podcasts now where you can actually real people. Yeah, once you have once you have this once you listen to a podcast long enough or you, you're familiar with the host or whatever they say, you essentially know who they are as a person and therefore you can kind of trust or not trust what they have to offer. Yes. If it feels good inside, if it feels your feeds your soul and makes you smile and makes you think and then those are the things you should be listening to or feeding yourself. So it's not just what we eat, but it's also what we consume mentally and what we see, what we look at. Right. Health and basically, is complex. In this country, everyone's seen as a consumer, so they're always trying to shove something down our throats. <laughs> Whether it be soda, clothes, movies, don't. Just say no. <laughs> if it's negative. If it's negative. And now that we've talked about this, you guys should start taking notice. When you're around people who are constantly complaining, see how that makes your vibe feel. It, it drains me. It drains me. I'm so sensitive. Even when I hear people start complaining, like, if I, of course, I want to be there for my friends. So, yes, to a certain extent, I do listen. But... I try to bring the more positive side to it, but if they constantly want to just talk about it, yeah, it's like the uh, like the boy who cried wolf. Mm-hmm, exactly. If they keep doing it, then give me a hug because I was thinking about that <laughs> earlier. Oh, sorry. Uh, if what was I going with this? I'm sorry. Yeah, if they keep saying or if you keep crying wolf, then like every time you say something, you know, it has less value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And see what I just did where I interrupted him? People should not do that. We should let each other complete our thoughts because Duma could have, you know, had the most great thing to say and I interrupted him and it kind of took him off track. So I'm sorry about that. That's right. I should save my excitement till after you complete your thought. Thoughts for thoughts. Thoughts for thoughts. So, as I was saying, now take notice and see how it feels when you're around the complaining friend. And then, 
go around the friend that usually, you know, is happy and complimenting you and just see how it makes your soul feel and how it makes you feel. Because if it drains you, you don't want to be in that situation. True. So it's all about what you look at even, even on Instagram or Facebook. I know before there used to be so many random videos going viral on Facebook and my mom sometimes would even bring up and be like, oh, look at this woman, you know, like, I don't know, so stupid. See, for me, like, guys, what, like, sometimes it's hard for me to come up with these examples because the way that I had to cope with things is I had to discard a lot of negative and foolishness out of my mind. So now when I try to think of it, it's hard to dig it out okay. because so much greatness and positivity is just all in the front. So I'm just like, wait, I don't have... There's no space in here anymore. There's no room for negativity because there's so many great things in the little room that I have kept for openness. Those are, that's my creative side, you know? Okay. And there, I just have to try being control of that. Um, anyways, where was I going at with this? I was saying, yes, the things that we look at on Facebook even. So mm -hmm. there was a silly video of a woman, I don't know, like eating a hundred hot dogs. What's this say? So to me, looking at that, those guys are really talented, though. So yeah, but competitor eaters. But anyway, yeah. number one, hot dogs are the worst thing to eat yeah. because they consist of human body parts, don't they? I think in the past. I hope not anymore. They do, and the casing <laughs> is poor. Anyways, hot Actually, dogs yeah, are just yeah. bad. Maybe yeah, like so, just like stuff that. And they were doing this for money. So looking at this, it makes a person believe that one, you should do anything for money, even if it is eating a hundred hot dogs and making yourself look like a fool. And number two, it's a waste of your life. So be mindful of the things you look at on Facebook, on Instagram, the things you read, anything negative or anything that has nothing to do with your purpose. It's essentially causing friction. Even if it's even if it's not negative, like if you see a bunch of stuff that you don't have, for instance, on like Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever, that is negativity because you don't have it, and then you you feel. I don't know, you know. It makes you feel sad or envious. So so we're not. What I'm saying is we're not really aware that we're feeding ourselves this negativity when. You know, the, ne the negativity comes in so many different enticing forms. Yeah. That's a really good point. So what should we do? We should change the words we use. Start with the words that we use now. And as soon as you start thinking something, like if you eat a, a meal, instead of saying, that's a terrible meal, just say, I've had better. Okay, yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And stop name calling. So don't say I'm fat, I'm lazy, I'm stupid. Say I am motivating myself to get up out of bed and go do the dishes. Say that. Instead of saying I'm so lazy, this is why I haven't done the dishes. You know, if you're talking to your friend and you want to complain about it, you complain in a way that's not really a complaint. It's more of right, a plan. Right now, these are all thoughts, right? You're saying thoughts to yourself? Right? Um, no. I'm saying when you're speaking to somebody. Or when you're speaking. Um, We're talking about the spoken words right now. Which start from thoughts. Okay. So when the thoughts have thoughts, they're not always valid. So... <laughs> Sorry. Okay, why? Where did you get confused? Or where did I, know, I, where did I were, get confused? You were talking about like how you were saying these things to yourself. Well, no, I'm sorry. I meant like if you're complain if you're on the phone with somebody okay. or if you're with your friends and they're at your house, instead of saying, I feel lazy or, you know, when you go to work or sometimes even or when people come over, you just start talking about yourself. Or you tell somebody else that they're lazy because they're not helping you by going to your room and getting that book that you want to read. So are you saying that is are you saying it's okay to have the thoughts? 
but it's but it's not okay to say it or is it wrong to also have the thoughts well we can't help but have the thoughts because it's our inner critic so once we have so once we have the thought so this is where it starts once we change our words then we can become so good that we can control our thoughts but i feel like we have to start with the words with the spoken word okay once we become yeah, 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 yeah. okay yeah, yeah. yeah once we're able to um it's like a process exactly okay. so once we can you know be aware that hey i'm about to say this word so say if i did say this is a terrible meal at that moment i would think i would say oh but you know i've had better or i would take it back or basically we'll you'll still say things but you have to take it back and say a positive statement or say it in a way that would be more constructive okay more appealing yeah, yeah. more positive okay use words to heal and uplift not destroy even yourself so people say i'm fat don't say that don't say you're fat just say i'm working on losing a few pounds and if you're not working on losing a few pounds then stop saying that you're fat or just stop caring about what people think but that's what i'm saying <laughs> some people sit there and they talk about how fat they are and just don't say that we're not noticing i don't sit there and think like wow you know jane jane doe's so huge no i mean to each his own if you're happy then you're happy but if you're fat and you can't even get out of bed and you're having struggles then there are other reasons that you've gained so much weight it's not that your fat is the problem it's the health some people are bigger than others so it's not about being big or small it's about how, what's affecting how your life is going and you know is it stopping you from doing things um anyway so what i'm saying is don't make fun of yourself don't name call don't call other people weird stupid lazy don't do any of that that's not nice number one and number two you're speaking these things into reality and stop all self-depreciation never make your body or your work product or anything that's associated with your name the butt of a joke don't allow it because when you're saying these things once again you're speaking them into reality you there's energy with those words so don't do that become more mindful of it so and then once you become mindful of it you you pretty much cut it out so you're saying don't even use like your name in a joke or something if it's putting yourself down if it's a funny joke that's fine but don't yeah don't like don't make a big nose joke about like i, I shouldn't make a big nose joke about myself mm -hmm. oh, okay you're, you're saying it about yourself to someone else okay. yeah or if someone else is doing it and i'm like you know going along with it and adding on to it or but mostly it's you know ourselves so really we can only control what our, what we do so i should never you know say that the project that I created was terrible, it was trash. I should say, you know, I basically I would focus on what I would want to change next time. So just speak about that. So if I do feel like I didn't do such a good job, just think about that and don't speak it and just say, next time I'm going to make the tables more consistent. If you're, if you created like an Excel chart, that's what I'm talking about. Or, you know, it just depends on different projects. If you get yeah, what I'm saying, like, do you have an example of maybe where, you know, where you can use that? Use what? Where if you feel negatively about something, how you can speak about it in a positive way. So if if you, you know, had, yeah, yeah. if you completed a work, if you produced a work product that you weren't so proud of, rather than trashing it, how would you express that to somebody? Like me, for instance, and you come home and you tell me, not come home, but you know what I mean. You, well, you and I talk, and then you tell me like about this work product, rather than saying it was terrible. I don't know. I guess I, I have to get used to that. I mean, usually I don't say negative things, but I am critical of myself, though. But yeah. I don't and know. then you voice it. I don't voice it. I just think it. Okay. Yeah. 
it looks different. So thinking it is one thing. But if you voice it, it just makes it even stronger. Right. So Definitely. that's good that you don't. It's good to self-analyze. Because words have power. And quantum energy doesn't have a sense of humor, so. Yeah, energy just goes with the flow. Yeah, so if you're like, but of a joke, yeah, it's funny. But quantum, en but quantum energy is going to grab that booty. And then you're actually a butt. And then you'll regret it. And then you will be a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And resist gossiping. Because if you're talking bad about somebody else, then really you're putting these you're words just out. just pooping in, the, in your home, basically. Mm -hmm. kind of. Exactly. <laughs> and amp up your words, actually. So instead of saying, I'm, you know, this movie is good say yeah the movie was great or the vacation that somebody went on instead of saying oh it was okay say it was a fantastic vacation and if someone's asking you how you're doing if you're doing well just say i'm doing excellent because it makes you feel good see it just makes me so happy when i say these words I'm not, yeah i never thought of doing something like that <laughs> yeah try it Duma. Yeah, yeah, in I'll fact try it. try it this whole week and let's talk about it just briefly next week okay, and see yeah. if it's uplifted you or motivated you or made you feel any different mm -hmm. by being selective with the words yeah but for me it's it's being selective with the thinking words because i don't i don't think i say these words but yeah so this is more for people that are having these conversations that are using mm -hmm. you know words like i've seen some moms that say well little susie you know she's always been slow at reading so yeah. it is what it is don't say that yeah, don't say little susie is slow because once you say that it's becoming a real thing with energy and susie's hearing it number one yeah that's where that's where the joking could, could really hurt a kid i think yeah. or their confidence mm -hmm. that's when like the adults like make a joke about them or something so yeah. be careful, adults. Yeah, or like when a kid writes on the wall and you're like, are you freaking stupid, you little two-year-old? Well, don't be calling two-year-olds stupid, but your five-year-old writes something on the wall. You tell them, are you stupid? Are you young? You know, you know better. And then they do it again and you wonder why. Because they're thinking, I'm not stupid, so I'm going to keep on writing. But if you say, hey, sweetheart, you are mature, you know what's right, and they talk to them, they won't do that. So... To you, it is, um, is the amount of negative energy, is that the same as when you think it or when you say it? Or is it, or is it worse when you say it? It's worse when you say it. Because now that you've said it, you've spent more time on it. So n now you know about thoughts. You know, when we have these thoughts, it's all about how much time we spend on them. So the more time we spend, um, it, the more it manifests. So once it becomes a thought, now we're thinking, and if we speak about it, then we've had more time and we're giving it more energy. And now we're putting it into the universe. So once it's a thought, you can disregard the thought. Not every single thought needs to be spoken. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Because our words are so powerful that you know, we can heal with the words or we can destroy somebody with the words. We can uplift somebody or we can make somebody feel so ashamed that they'll go commit suicide. Or we can take a person who's in depression and we can tell them so many great things about themselves and make them feel so happy that the next day they're like, hey, life is great. Yeah. You know, we can start war with words or we can stop battles with words you change as a person through words our words are our world you're manifesting every single word that you're putting out yeah words are like food for your brain our brain is a tool and I'm sure you guys have all heard, you know, let there be light. And then there was light. It wasn't like some magic where it was just like light. No, the, there was a thought and then it was like, we need light. And then somehow, some way people figured out how to make light. 
So that's what they mean. So when they said that God, you know, said all these th things into existence, and then we read about it in the Bible, the Quran, it's basically saying that our thoughts and then when we speak them are what becomes reality reality so that's why they always say you know speak good don't put your parents down and you know like not don't put your parents down but don't be mean to your parents don't bash anybody don't use your words to belittle people you know they say those type of things in the bible for a reason they say those things in the quran for a reason buddhists said peace is the way for a reason makes sense yeah all these self-help books you know the secret positive affirmations the law of attraction they all talk about how you know words are what create what as we're as we're speaking we're creating so now think about it like that as you're speaking you're creating so create positive and amazing feelings and you're creating feelings you're creating so not okay this is another thing so words not only create emotions they also create action mm -hmm. and actions create our reality right so it's all connected right it's like that one i forget the whole thing but but it comes from thoughts though thoughts create the words though so that's why we have to be careful with our thoughts Yes, and that goes back to when we have a thought, if it doesn't feel good, if it's negative, we need to discard the thought. We need to not think about it. Have think about a that's positive so much thought. Easier said than done, though. Yeah. yeah, but you get good at it. That's by creating an environment that is positive. So if you're if you create a positive environment for yourself, once you have a negative thought or negative feeling, you can easily do something else. You can go read a book or you can go outside. You can listen to music, whatever it is that makes you feel good. So you have to actually first know what makes you feel good as a person and then surround yourself with that. Whether it be people, items, um, whatever makes you feel good. Not drugs. <laughs> yeah, not drugs. So it's almost to a point, like you said, if it's something negative, then just stay silent. It's better to remain silent than to express a negative thought or feeling. I agree. Mm -hmm. So the way to help others by your words is by complimenting others, by uplifting them, by bring, pointing out the good when you hear somebody being negative. But be genuine. Don't just make stuff up. Like, don't just you know speak out of your booty out of your ass yeah that would, because again that that devalues your words you know if you keep doing that and if you have nothing positive to say then just stay silent don't call people stupid don't tell people their outfit is ugly um don't make fun of people at all if it's your friend yeah you joke about certain things that's fine but if you know that you hurt somebody's feelings apologize and let them know that you had no idea that you made them feel like that, may, that your joke would make them feel like that. Or if you did, and if you're feeling bad, then let them know that. Yeah, but I mean, sometimes you don't know that you've hurt them, but you actually have, you know? Yeah, but that's why people should let other people know when something's hurt them. It's a responsibility. Right. You yeah. train people how to treat you. Okay. In a way. So... Basically, use your words to uplift, not harm and destroy. And how can we help ourselves with our words? Um, what I do is positive affirmations. So this is a fact. It's, um, wait, hold on, let me get, go to this because I want to be very precise. It's very important. So it's the illusion of truth effect. It's proven that when you read or see something consistently, it is more valid over something you hear or see less often. It doesn't have to be true. So this can be something that's untrue, but you'll start believing it. It'll become reality. So that's why positive affirmations help. 
and I am powerful. You see how I started that? I am powerful. Mm -hmm. Anytime you start a sentence with I am, and then whatever you end it with, that is like the one of the most powerful sentences you will ever say. And that will be essential to your manifestation and to your, you know, mental well-being. Instead of saying I am lazy and I am fat, say I am beautiful, I am powerful, I am energetic, I am a leader, I am a nurturer. Say these things about yourself. I am confident. And say them every single day. And see how it makes you feel. Okay. There was a point where I would literally every single day before I walked into work would just start saying, you know, all the things that I wanted to see in myself, all the qualities. You know, I am a leader. I am confident. I am helpful. I am understanding. I'm patient. I'm productive. I'm efficient. You know, all these things. And I don't do it anymore, but sometimes I still do. But now I feel like I am. I'm very confident and you know, I'm doing the things I was talking about or thinking mm -hmm. or expressing to the universe. I used to talk about a lot of things before they actually manifested and people would tell me I was crazy and put me down or tell me reasons why it wouldn't work. But now that I'm actually living those things and I, on a daily basis, I see things actually coming towards me that I think about, that I speak about, that I write about. It just feels good and that's why I started this podcast even because the things that we talk about are true and you have to believe in yourself you have to believe in something in order to understand this yeah I agree so take the positive words write them in walls you know put sticky notes put reminders set reminders on your phone you know, surround yourself with people who bring out the best in you, who point out the good things, who provide constructive criticism, not make fun of you and always pointing out the worst or pointing towards the worst in every situation. Be mindful and conscious of what you put around yourself, what you feed your body, what TV shows you watch, what type of music you listen to. Subconsciously, you're feeding your body that. Right. Your body, your mind, your environment. So it attracts. It's a frequency. Fly on a high frequency, not a low frequency. Because if you're flying high, then you'll be good to others. And if you're feeling good, then you encounter a person, you smile at them, you tell them, hey, your hair looks nice. You know, you make them feel good. And they go carry on. And it's a seed. You plant seeds of hope, not doubt or fear. Plant seeds of love. Yeah. And that's it, you guys, because I have nothing else to say. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, just be just be really aware of. Um, yeah, be aware of your surroundings at all times. Because, I mean, especially with, I think with people, it's a lot easier because like you can kind of tell. You know, when, when you when you're with someone, whether they're negative or not, you know. Take but, notice. Yeah, but be very aware of everything else. Everything that's not a person that you know is around you too. Yeah, the pictures we look at, the movies, the shirts we wear. Yeah. Be mindful. Think. Have some thoughts. And also, just words in general. Words are, <laughs> words are very. Well, in, in my eyes, sometimes I think they're not. They're just not real, and they're not important. Which That's is, which a big is, mistake. No, no, but but hear me out on this. In the fact that words try to capture something but the fact that you're trying to capture it with that word misrepresents that something you know what I mean? mm, I'm so glad you talked about that okay are you saying that people try to come when you're now we're talking about a person discussing 
their feelings or trying to communicate their feelings, right? Anything, any idea, any word. Like when you're, um, I don't know, like banana. It's like when you t when you talk about when you say the word banana, you're trying to capture a banana, but that word banana, the word banana, could never actually truly capture the actual banana. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we just use words to communicate, though. That's what all that's all words should be used for is communication or uplifting. True. That's it. It's a tool. That's and true. manifesting. It's a tool. It's a tool. But yeah, I guess. But it, I'm just saying it, it's. It's sometimes unfortunate that, yeah, you, you can sometimes say all the right words, but it doesn't actually capture what you're trying to actually say, you know? Right. So you're saying take actions. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Walk it like you talk it. Yeah, I guess. Back that shit up. Yeah, it's just words are just... Like, for instance, what... what Talk to me with no words. In, in like a in like a very like psychedelic, you know, um, trip or something. Something like words are just gone. It's just gone. Your language, your vocabulary, everything is just gone. And then you 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 feel almost like this relief that you don't have to deal with that, or that you can still navigate this world mm. without that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was just trying to kind of. Essentially, bring we don't out. need words. Yeah, if you, know, you hear a lot of you songs, com you communicate so much without with energies. Saying we yeah. we communicate with our energies. You know how they say your vibe introduces you, introduces you. Your energy introduces you when you walk into a room. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. So technically, you don't need to speak. You never need to speak. Yeah. We can just point. If you want to communicate. But we should be mindful of the words that we choose when we're speaking to somebody. So yeah. a lot of times, of this, yeah. a lot of times people send emojis to each other. They'll send hearts or kissy faces. And those are sent around so loosely. But what if a woman is sending an emoji to a man and a lot of men, women, uh, females right now, I'm telling you this from experience because my son, he was chatting with somebody and I guess the person it was a girl she sent him an emoji with maybe a sad face a sad face and he got really freaked out he said whoa like what is what's wrong with her like why is she so sad all of a sudden and everything was fine and and I was like oh it was because she didn't see him they missed each other like the day before they didn't get to see each other um the passing period and he was like wow you know like she's crazy is she obsessed with me and i was like no no you know girls we do that we send each other we send out emojis like she's just saying like oh sad face you know didn't get to see you and he was like oh okay but that moment i realized that she's like even me i do it i send out hearts kisses and but you don't know how the other person is is um perceiving or perceiving that and we have to right, be mindful of that with, especially with emojis emojis or even saying i miss you or people say i love you they throw that around like it's no big deal but these are powerful words and by you telling the next person that you miss them constantly it may make them think something more or you know if you're just constantly saying i miss you and you're not going to see them it makes them feel like you're a liar so don't just throw words or sentences out loosely and be aware of who you're speaking to and choose words based on, you know, the circumstance and the person basically that you're speaking to. Be mindful of that. Don't lead people on with certain words. And just because, you know, we don't, just because our perception is one way. Like when people tell me they miss me or they want to see me, I literally don't take it to a certain extent where I'm just like, okay, let's bust out our calendars and see when. I just say, okay, yeah, I miss you and I want to see you too. But in a way that's super, it's um, it's fake. Almost, unless you really do miss yeah, me. No, that is fake. And a lot of times I, when I don't see my friends, I text them that I miss them and I do miss them and I do mean that. You know, but I do wish I could make the time to go see certain people more, but it's just, it's hard because we live so far apart and just you know whatever it might be number of things mm -hmm. so we have to be careful with that we should not call everybody babe we should not like be selective 
don't tell your spouse you hate them even if you're just kidding around don't say you know what if you walk outside and you die and you know be mindful of things that you say especially if you don't mean them mean what you say and say what you mean all we have is our word at the end of the day words create everything a person's reputation can be tarnished with words a person calls somebody to get a recommendation to get a job and here we are you know somebody talks about all the great skills so words are powerful and they make certain people feel a certain way one word can make one person feel another way a certain way and a different person feel a different way true so don't use the same words with the same people just there's there's the thought and then there's the words so as best as you can try to capture your thought use those words <laughs> I guess I don't know yeah be aware be careful don't be sorry mm-hmm. and remember if it's on your mind it's currently under manifestation word peace out